Hello, Fruitport High School chemistry students. Uh, welcome to our next lesson. Our lesson today is about the law of conservation of mass. And it's a really like fundamental principle that, that uh, governs all of science, all of chemistry. And so I want you to know the law of conservation of mass and then uh, get a couple other bonus things. See, it's a, it might be a little trickier than you thought. And then uh, uh, set you up to do a lab for our next day in class, all right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring the screen back on down to, uh, to this. So the law of conservation of mass. If you hear the word conservation, uh, what does that mean to you? Have you heard that word before? Uh, like uh, zoos like to pride themselves on being conservationists, where they try to not let the wetlands get destroyed, keep it the same, right? So the law of conservation of mass says this, Mass can't be created, mass can't be destroyed. So mass can't be created nor destroyed. Another way to say that is matter cannot be created nor destroyed. All right, now when we talk about matter, we're talking about the tiny particles, things that, you know, we call atoms that we'll learn in a, in a couple days here. And so you can't create or destroy mass. Now, this doesn't seem very obvious sometimes because uh, sometimes a situation looks like things started to weigh more or things started to weigh less. Like if you had a, uh, we had a big bonfire one time, I got a whole heavy wheelbarrow full of uh, logs and tried to, uh, you know, wheel it down to the, the pit. And we had a huge, big bonfire. And then the next day I cleaned up all the ash and it didn't weigh nearly as much. And it might look like we destroyed matter, but we can't. It just moved to a different form that we didn't, we didn't have, okay? Uh, you might think, well, don't one cell turn into two cells, it turn into four cells? That's not creating matter, that's creating cells. But the matter that makes those cells came from other forms of the matter. Okay, so uh, like uh, atoms can't be destroyed, atoms can't be created. Mommy Adam and Daddy Adam don't have a little baby Adam, right? Or an atom doesn't grow and grow and grow and then split into two atoms. Cells do that, but atoms don't. Okay, so with this, I want to bring up a little thing about chemical reactions. Okay, so chemical reactions are often shown using a big long arrow, like I've shown here. And I want you to know these vocab words. Any material that is at the beginning before a chemical change or chemical reaction occurs are called the reactants. They're the things that are going to react together. And anything after the arrow is called the products. This is what's made or produced. And don't do what I did in eighth grade when I learned this. I memorized them backwards and I got a couple quiz questions wrong. So this is a very famous a chemical reaction called photosynthesis, right? Carbon dioxide and water through the power of uh, plants and uh, energy from the sun turn into glucose, a sugar, and oxygen. And in this case here, if I asked you, is glucose a product or a reactant? It's after the arrow, glucose would be a product. So would oxygen, uh, an oxygen molecule. Uh, Carbon dioxide molecules and water molecules would be part of the reactants, okay? So the key for this is that the mass, the total mass of the reactants is going to equal the total mass of the products because of the law of conservation of mass. All right, I'm going to stop the video and then uh, do another quick one to introduce our lab. All right.